One of the things that has surprised me the most as I historically went through my process of trying to find the solution to my GI problems was how often you can see someone who's an expert and they can be very confident about their diagnosis and treatment and yet they can still be very wrong. Now in this video, I wanna share a bit about my personal story of how I came to finding and getting treated by traditional Chinese medicine doctors when I had already seen most of the people that I should have seen in the conventional biomedical space. I had seen my physician and specialists, etc. Now I wanna share a bit about my experience and the results I had and what eventually led me to continue to be interested in Chinese medicine. Hey guys, Alex Hine, author of the book, Master of the Day. Now, you know, for me, where everything began was as a kid, I was always very thin. Uh, I was very underweight. I really struggled with digestive problems, especially. And for me, honestly, I would have a bowel movement maybe once every three days, sometimes four, five, seven days. And I didn't really think about it that much because I just didn't really talk about it with anybody. And I thought it was kind of convenient, actually. I was like, oh, I don't have to go to the bathroom every day like I see everybody else. But in my late teens or so when I was in college, I noticed more and more discomfort from the days when I would not have a bowel movement. I would feel pressure, a little bit of uh, bloating, and it just, I started not to feel good, right? I mean, 19 years of constipation, basically. Make anyone not feel good. So it started by me trying out a bunch of things on my own. And when those didn't work, I went to my general practitioner, the physician. And he said, you know, to try to increase fiber and just see how that goes, no results. He referred me to a nutritionist. The nutritionist was a great, very sweet woman, very knowledgeable. She also advised me to increase fiber. So I already had a healthy diet and I just started pouring brand fiber on top of my oatmeal in the morning. Because again, her philosophy was that I had slow bowel transit. So what I needed was just more fiber. Well, that gave me really, really bad abdominal pain and bloating where I couldn't sleep at night. So she referred me to the GI specialist. The GI specialist said, you know, he palpated my abdomen for two minutes and was like, sounds like IBS. So literally in under a five minute chat, he booked me for a colonoscopy. And honestly, it was at that point where I was a little bit uh, disheartened. I was like, number one, I'm not dying. I don't have ulcerative colitis. I'm not bleeding. I don't like... There's no acute threat to my life or my health besides this annoying problem. And I'm eating healthy. I was raised in a healthy eating family. I don't know what it is. But because everyone was looking at it from a mechanical standpoint, right? Everyone was just saying, like, no one asked me any other questions about my life. Are you stressed? Are you overworking? How's your sleep? No one asked me any of those questions. Do you feel anxious? Like, what's going on? Everyone just was like, diet, okay? Mechanical approach. Um, I took the GI specialist's advice, but then I later canceled my colonoscopy and I never went to a doctor again for my digestive problems. So flash forward about six years. In those six years, I tried every therapy imaginable, every intervening year, right? I would be good for a few weeks and then something would happen and I'd get constipated for like five days. And I'd be so miserable or in such bad discomfort that I would like buy 10 books on, from GI specialists or nutritionists and I would try all those diets, right? Order all these weird supplements. I would order hundreds of dollars of supplements and they were worthless. The thing that helped me the most was the specific carbohydrate diet. Now, so I found one solution and I relied on that SCD diet for on and off for 10 years from my early 20s until almost 30. Now, as time went on, over and over and over, it was interesting that the SCD diet made me feel good, but I lost a lot of weight because it's basically no carbs. So I'm already an underweight guy historically, my whole life. SCD makes me amazing with digestion, but I just cannot satisfy my hunger now because I feel like I'm always hungry, not eating any carbs. And I was also going to the gym four or five days a week. So at least I had one solution. A temporary solution was that diet. It was a godsend. And then I had a friend who had Crohn's disease that was really severe. And already in his 20s, physicians wanted to resect his bowel and possibly give him a colostomy bag. So he saw this Chinese medicine doctor that was recommended to him. And he said that 
It helped him make some breakthroughs, and even though it didn't cure him, it was the best results he had gotten. So he went to see this doctor, and he referred me, the, you know, the doctor's information. Now, I saw this doctor, and actually the very first herbal formula he gave me, those 30 days, I had the best, most normal bowel function in 29 years of my life. 28 years. I was 28 or 29. So that blew my mind, because first of all, if this guy could do that so easily, and even my physician and specialist couldn't, what the hell was I doing going to the doctor? It just made no sense to me that no one knew that this was an option. No one knew that this alternative worked so well. Now that Chinese medicine doctor had a fully packed clinic, 100 patients a week, uh, booked out for months at a time. I mean, he got people undeniable clinical results. And it just piqued my interest. And so I offered to pay him. I said, hey, can I just pay you one day a week to pick your brain about Chinese medicine? I'm, now I'm really intrigued. And he said, you know what, why don't you just come work here for a few hours a day because you own your own, your own business. If you want to go into this field, you'll learn the things you don't like, which is like the phone and front desk stuff. And we could also just talk about Chinese medicine all day long. So that's what I did. I worked there for a year. I continued to build my business and work part-time in the evening hours. And we would just discuss and learn. I would just learn, you know, at the feet of this mentor about what Chinese medicine really was and how it worked and why no other physicians and no other really specialists and practitioners, these highly educated, credentialed people, they just thought Chinese medicine was a bunch of bullshit. And yet here I was and thousands of patients getting better results and leaving the conventional medical system. So I, all I cared about was getting better, right? I couldn't have cared less about the philosophy of Chinese medicine, alternative versus conventional medicine. I didn't care. I just wanted to get better and get the therapy that was the best long-term fix for me. Now, this experience, you know, later, obviously now I'm wrapping up a doctorate in Chinese medicine and I can even treat myself with formulas and things like that. And I don't really have any digestive problems after 30 years. And it taught me a few key lessons that I think will help you if you're going through something very similar in your life. The first key lesson is that your intuition is something you should really take seriously when it comes to illness. If you've gone to your physician, you've done the conventional therapy, but your intuition says, I should look for an alternative, look for an alternative, listen to it. Your physician might not support that, but you should take your physician's advice and see an alternative. The second thing it taught me about is the danger of experts and authority. Because every physician I saw, they were all good people. I still like them as humans, but none of their advice helped. And they were all very confident that they were right, but they were wrong. And so at the end of the day, let results be your guidepost. You may have the most highly trained Harvard specialist in whatever, but if the results aren't coming that you want, maybe it's time to see somebody else. And the last thing is to really understand that you are your own doctor. You are the person that eventually, primarily and eventually heals yourself. So you need to be proactive in trying out the things and documenting the results you get or don't get. I mean, I have an Evernote document that's probably 60 pages long, every intervention I tried and the results I got for my digestion. If you really want to get better, take it seriously. You need to be the problem solver and not relying on everyone else outside of you. Take their advice, but you need to be problem solving in your own time and then be honest with whoever you're working with. So I hope that helps you guys Obviously, this completely changed my life. I mean, lifelong digestive problems to no digestive problems and understanding that there's a real alternative to the, the mainstream medical system or a complement to the mainstream medical system. And I would obviously advise people to get the best of both worlds for whatever you're getting seen for. All right, so I hope my story helps a little bit. And if you want, I have related videos on this exact topic and a bit more on my story right there and right there.